Chinese companies are once again in the crosshairs. For years, U.S. trade officials have been working to combat China's deceptive transshipment practices. In an effort to dodge U.S. tariffs, Chinese exporters process their goods in China, then ship them to a country with lower tariff rates. After simple repackaging and changing the country of origin label, the products are then forwarded to the U.S., effectively circumventing a significant portion of the tariffs. As one man in a video clip stated, quote, If you're in international business, never confine yourself to your own thinking or just to a tiny local perspective. Always have a global mindset. Another man claimed, Following the U.S.-China trade war, many supply chains, primarily serving the U.S. and Europe, have been forced to relocate to Southeast Asia. He added that European and American customers are primarily concerned with one question. Is your factory located inside or outside China? Recently, Chinese enterprises have been found to be involved in tax evasion. On September 29th, Chairman Mike Gallagher of the U.S. Select Committee on the Strategic Competition between the United States and the Chinese Communist Party wrote to the Department of Homeland Security requesting a thorough investigation into the trade fraud practices of Chinese companies trying to evade U.S. tariffs. Gallagher, along with the Republican Congressman Darren LaHood, highlighted that Qingdao Sunsung, a Chinese car hose manufacturer, processed products in Thailand before exporting them to the U.S. as a means to avoid tariffs. Qingdao Sunsung once submitted a listing application to the Beijing Stock Exchange. This document revealed detailed information about the company's tax evasion strategy. According to the document, Automotive parts produced by the company in China were subjected to a 10% tariff since September 2018, which increased to 25% by May 2019. Interestingly, the document, with great professionalism, detailed the cost changes associated with their factory setup in Thailand, all under the euphemism of reducing tariff costs. Furthermore, the document showed that the value added in Thailand was less than even 10%, far below the 35% required for products originally produced in China. These tariffs are often referred to as Section 301 tariffs, named after the section of the 1974 Trade Act that the Trump administration used to impose them. The tariffs were introduced to investigate and address unfair trade practices by trade partners, and they have continued under the Biden administration. Gallagher's letter states, quote, We are concerned that such types of trade fraud are prevalent in today's economic environment as businesses adopt these practices to effectively evade the U.S. tariff system. Moreover, during an August hearing on China's threat to American manufacturing, Gallagher commented on how China's undercutting prices and dumping have had devastating consequences for manufacturing, American workers, and economic security. He suggested that strategically imposing tariffs on China can reduce reliance on China and boost domestic manufacturing. This type of activity from Chinese enterprises began in the late 1990s. In response to import quotas on Chinese textiles, deceptive transshipment became rampant. According to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. trade officials have indicated that amidst the ongoing U.S.-China trade tensions, this phenomena has re-emerged. Chinese firms are once again under scrutiny. The U.S. Department of Commerce reported in March that it's investigating whether Chinese solar cell and panel manufacturers are illicitly avoiding tariffs by expanding their operations into four Southeast Asian countries. On August 18th, the U.S. Department of Commerce officially decided to impose import tariffs on Chinese solar manufacturers accused of dodging tariffs and damaging U.S. industries. The Commerce Department found that several major Chinese solar panel suppliers, including BYD, Artis Solar, Trina Solar, and Vina Solar, were avoiding existing anti-dumping tariffs. They have been processing their products in Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, or Vietnam before shipping them to the U.S. Department officials also mentioned that tariffs will be imposed on New East Solar as the company refused to cooperate with an on-site audit of its operations in Cambodia. The case was initially brought to the U.S. Department of Commerce in March 2022 by Oxen Solar, a solar panel assembler based in California. Oxen's senior executives claimed that Chinese solar manufacturers were conducting minor or insignificant operations in Southeast Asia, allowing them to relabel their panels to avoid tariffs. The U.S. Department of Commerce launched an investigation in March 2022 and by December expanded the tariffs to cover products exported from Southeast Asian countries. Data reveals that in the first quarter of 2023, U.S. solar panel exports totaled over 850,000 tons, up from 672,000 tons in the fourth quarter of 2022. 
Vietnam accounted for 30.4% of these imports, followed by Thailand, Malaysia, and Cambodia. Statistics from Panjiva, a global trade data company based in New York, suggest that in the first quarter of the year, these four Southeast Asian countries made up 79.2% of the total photovoltaic module imports to the U.S. The Commerce Department stated that such actions are tantamount to trying to evade the current anti-dumping and countervailing duty orders against Chinese solar cells and components. The ruling underscores the department's commitment to holding China accountable for trade distortions that harm U.S. industries. Under U.S. law, if there's evidence that goods targeted by existing anti-dumping or countervailing orders are finished or assembled in a third country using components imported from the targeted country, the Commerce Department has the authority to investigate. Such tax evasion significantly harms U.S. industries, workers, and businesses. Anti-dumping and countervailing orders aim to protect and provide relief to U.S. domestic industries facing unfair competition. Chinese companies are also evading Indian taxes. Indian media reported in August 2022 that Nirmala Sitharaman, India's finance minister, during a Q&A session at the India Council of States, revealed that the government is investigating alleged tax evasion cases against three Chinese mobile companies, Oppo, Vivo India, and Xiaomi. Notices have already been sent to these companies. Investigations by law enforcement agencies reveal that Vivo Mobiles India had total sales amounting to 15 billion US dollars from July 2017 to March 2021, of which nearly half was primarily remitted to China and its territories. The finance minister stated that based on an investigation by the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, a lawsuit notice demanding approximately 530 million US dollars has been sent to OPPO. Additionally, formal investigations have been initiated into five tax evasion cases involving Xiaomi technology. Like India, U.S. trade officials have grappled with these challenges for years. According to Wall Street Journal columnists Vladimir Babbage and Christopher Tang, one reason for the persistence of this transshipment phenomenon is that the standards set by U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP, for determining a product's country of origin are sometimes unclear. For example, if a Chinese-Vietnamese exporter's operations meet the criteria to change the production label, Vietnam can legitimately be called the product's country of origin. Meanwhile, the CBP inspects only about 3% of shipped goods, so overseas tracking remains relatively low. Reports also cited statistics from the Vietnam Bureau of Statistics showing that most of Vietnam's imports in 2021 were exported to the U.S. The aforementioned experts had previously used public data, including Chinese company establishment dates, total assets, government shareholding ratios, and past environmental records, to predict which firms might violate environmental regulations. Their model, based on data from 2004 through 2012, found that the top 20% of companies with the highest risk scores comprise 71% of firms with actual violations discovered by the Chinese government in 2013. Thus, numerical models can effectively predict potential business fraud among Chinese companies. They suggest enhancing transparency in the international supply chain regarding the movement of entities, funds, and information. The combination of sensory devices and blockchain technology can create a reliable digital transaction record at every step of the supply chain. Such records can encompass geolocation data, images of the production process and product, transaction time, the identity of businesses involved in the transaction, and the types and quantities of goods input and output in factories. These records can be shared among supply chain members as well as with customs officials and investigative agencies in different countries. However, obtaining accurate and timely information on physical supply chain transactions is challenging. Whether sensors or humans, errors can occur when recording information, and trade agents may be bribed to tamper with data. Especially among Chinese enterprises under Communist Party rule, fraudulent activities are widespread. Ultimately, the root issue is to address human integrity and low professional standards. Chinese corporate fraud has gone so far as to find its way into ordinary people's mailboxes. UK man Dylan Davies received 580 brown envelopes last November, and over the following six months, he continuously received tax bills from 11,000 Chinese companies. These companies fraudulently used his home address for VAT registration. It's terrifying, Mr. Davies said, upon receiving a letter from Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs demanding 500,000 pounds in taxes. The UK's Permanent Secretary of the Tax Department, Jim Hara, stated, 
Out of these, 2,356 companies have tax liabilities and we've taken steps to prevent any further communication regarding these debts to that address. However, he added that investigators have yet to find evidence of fraud or intent to defraud. In testimony provided to the Public Accounts Committee, he indicated that the investigation is ongoing. The law changed in January 2021, meaning that online marketplaces such as Amazon or eBay are now required to collect value-added tax VAT, from overseas traders and remit it to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs HMRC. Financial crime consultant Graham Barrow expressed suspicion about fraudulent activities by these overseas companies. For all intents and purposes, it looks like VAT fraud, he said. There's no other reason to register for VAT at a completely unfamiliar address, especially when 11,000 companies are doing so. Barrow believes these firms are charging customers VAT but not passing it to the HMRC. At the national level, such actions by Chinese enterprises are rarely scrutinized and penalized by the Chinese Communist Party. The widespread fraud severely disrupts the markets of importing countries. This is why the Biden administration continues to apply the Section 301 tariffs introduced during the Trump administration. Businesses are often lured by low prices from China despite increased operational risks. On a national scale, this dynamic amplifies trade imbalances. While the fraudulent tactics of Chinese enterprises continue to evolve, trading partners may continue to sour on China. Coupled with the collapse of China's domestic economy, Chinese enterprises may soon find themselves in a dire situation. Thank you.